there, and welcome to 1027. I'm Pastor Joe Meyer, the lead pastor at Glory Day Lutheran Church. And as I always say, in beautiful Urbandale, Iowa, thankful that you're joining me today as we reboot uh, 1027, our podcast. And uh, we're doing so because we decided to have both an, a, uh, an audio version of it as well as a video version. And so you are able um, uh, to either listen to it only uh, and if you're running or, or exercising or driving or whatever, that's the uh, the version for you. Or uh, you're able to watch the the video and uh, and see my handsome face, of course, right now or something like that. Uh, but uh, so thankful that you're with us again. Uh, this uh, reboot, we're going to start with some hot button stuff, and that is uh, God and government. I'm going to do a three part series on this because people have been asking me a lot of questions and. Uh, again, as you know, as I've said it to people, I'm not a poli sci major, so I'm not going to try and speak into uh, governmental things that I don't know anything about. But I, I am a theologian, and I can tell you how God feels about these things from His Word. And that's don't forget, His Word is our authority. That is that that is what we keep going back to. We don't go back to well, Mom and Dad taught me this, or this is what I believe, or I read this article. What does God's word say about what you are, whatever it is, God and government, whatever it happens to be? Uh, And so this first study that I want to do with you uh, talks about what is sometimes called the two kingdom theory. I don't think it's a theory at all, by the way. I think it's the, the two kingdoms. That's the Bible is very clear that that uh, there are two kingdoms in this world, and God rules them both. So you have the kingdom of the left hand and the kingdom of the right hand. And so, uh, how does the Bible speak into that? Well, the kingdom of the left hand is government, and the kingdom of the right hand is the church. Both of them are gods. Well, everything is gods, but both of them are gods. Both of them belong to Him, and so He rules and reigns over each one of those. So let me do some Bible study with you. So if you want to uh, flip over to Romans chapter 13. Now, again, if you're, <laughs> as I always say, if you're driving, you shouldn't be watching the video anyway. But if you're driving, uh, just uh, listen to me and then look it up later. But Romans 13, uh, the the first seven verses speak into this very subject. And it's very, uh, it's may, maybe not, uh, it, it might be something that you've read before, but maybe not something that you've really uh, dwelt on or thought a lot about. But uh the Lord is pretty uh, straightforward as to what he believes government is for in our lives. And so this is the way that it, it reads. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. Why? Uh, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, you understand, but to bad, you understand, you go 75 miles an hour in a school zone, you're going to be in trouble, all right? They're, they are the terror uh, to, to bad behavior. And yes, it's bad behavior to go 75 in a school zone. All right, so, uh, so uh, he then says, would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good. Obey the law and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant. Notice that. He is God's servant for your good. Uh, and... Uh, uh, understood, watching over you governmentally is a good thing from God. It's a good gift, a good gift from God. So he's he's a, a God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, for, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes. Notice, The Bible even speaks into taxes, right? For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed them taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, and honor to whom honor is owed. Okay, so this should uh, somewhat ring a bell with you in the Gospels. So Jesus has challenged uh, the uh, uh, Jewish leadership, want to try and trip Jesus up, on the issue of taxes. Should they pay taxes or not? Because, of course, they didn't exactly have a love affair with the Roman government, all right? So they asked Jesus, what should we do? And so Jesus is frustrated with them and and basically, literally says, why are you trying to trip me up on this thing? Give me a coin. Whose inscription is on this thing? And, of course, uh, contrary to what the Jews would do, make no graven image, the Bible says in the Ten Commandments, part and parcel, by the way, of have 
have no other gods before me and make no graven image go together. That they are the same thing, all right? But uh, so they show him the coin. They, the coin has the image of Caesar. And so Jesus says those famous words, pay to, to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's, all right? Now, that kind of confuses the issue because Caesar belongs to God. Don't forget, leaders like Pharaoh belonged to God, even if he didn't think so. Leaders like Nebuchadnezzar belonged to God. And, and Nebuchadnezzar eventually figures it out. In Daniel chapter 4, you can read that. He comes to faith in Yahweh, all right? Uh, leaders like Cyrus, the Medo-Persian, was uh, actually called the anointed of God, the Mashiach. Uh, Messiah is the word, but the anointed of God as he would deliver the Israelites from Babylon back to their back to their homeland, of course. So all of those are governmental leaders. I'll, I'll give you another one. Naaman, Naaman, who uh, had leprosy, if you recall, uh, Naaman was is said to have been given victory for Syria as a, a leader of the armies of Syria and the king of Syria, of course. Uh, victories uh, to Syria because God gave them to them to him. That's an amazing truth, right? But again, God rules the government as kingdom of the left hand. Now, does God advocate everything that the government does? Of course not. I, I've said this before uh, in this podcast, but let me just remind you. Did I, I would ask you this? Did God? put Bill Clinton into office, I, I use this example because it's an easy one, into office, we have to believe that according to Daniel chapter 2, he, he sets up princes and he takes them down. And so, yeah, he, he's in charge, right? And so, uh, in fact, God put him, uh, God's in charge, that is, God put him into position. But this is the thing, did he did he advocate what he was doing when he committed adultery? The answer is, of course not. Neither did he advocate what the other leaders were doing when they acted badly as well. Uh, oh, by the way, did he put David into office? Yeah. Did he advocate Bathsheba and uh, Uriah? Uh, Bathsheba committing adultery with him and Uriah being killed at the hand of David? The answer is, is of course not, right? And so just because God uses the government for his purposes, that is to keep us safe and have good, solid, Lord willing, good, solid communities, it doesn't mean that they are going to always act in the way that God wants them to act, right, Christian? And so so we, we still say, though, that's the kingdom of the left hand, all right? In fact, let me help you with that. So in our sanctuary, uh, the... the uh, uh, the altar is oriented this way, and it's a little bit different, but just to, to help you understand, the altar is oriented on the, the law side of the altar and the gospel side of the altar, all right? Uh, and so the left side is the law side of the, the altar, and the right side is the gospel horn, is what it's often called, a uh, horn of the altar. And so again, that idea of the right side is this gospel going forward idea. Kingdom of the left hand is government. They are you know, keeping us safe and don't, don't drive 75 in a school zone, that kind of thing. And then the kingdom of the right hand is the gospel. And, and the gospel goes out, of course, how? Through the church. So the kingdom of the left hand is government. Kingdom of the right hand is the church. And so let me take you to a different passage. So this is Matthew chapter 16. And again, I hope that if you're, uh, if you're studying along with me and you want to turn to those passages that you just either uh, stop, you know, pause the thing or whatever so you're able to get at it. But this is the confession of Peter of Jesus being the Christ, the Son of the living God. But he says something important, and Jesus says something important in this segment. And so this is how it goes. I'm, I'm in verse 13, Matthew 16, verse 13. Uh, now, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, this is not Caesarea Maritima. Caesarea Maritima is the Caesarea by the sea, and that's the place where Herod hung out, where Pontius Pilate hung out. By the way, we have a, a seat that has Pontius Pilate's name on it in the um, in, in the uh, theater that was right along the sea right there. That's Caesarea Maritima. That's a different place than Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi is north, and Caesarea Philippi is where there was a massive cave where they would throw their babies, and it's terrible, uh, as sacrifices uh, to Molech, all right, the Canaanite god. 
And yes, even the Israelites involved themselves in such things. And so uh, that is called the gates of hell. It's a, it's a big cavern. And if you go with me to the Holy Land, you can actually see it. All right. So uh, that's where they're at. Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He says, but who do you say that I am? And here you go. Peter gets a Holy Spirit driven confession of Christ. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, that is little stone. And on this big rock, so he's the little stone on this big rock, I will build my church. That is the confession of Jesus being the Christ. I will build my church and the gates of hell using uh, what was right behind Jesus, the, the, the uh, cavern where they threw the children to, to sacrifice them to Molech, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What do you loose on earth? Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he strictly charged them to tell no one that he was the Christ. Now, this is the kingdom of the right hand. That in this world, we are going forward and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We are going forward bringing the gospel. So in a very real sense, not the law of God, but in a very real sense, the government brings the law, uh, brings uh, strictures, brings curbs, keeps us safe. The government brings the law and the church brings the gospel. Notice they're connected in that they both belong to God but you got to be really careful, Christian, as we go through the rest of these podcasts, I'll flesh this out a little bit more. You got to be really careful not to mix the two. I would suggest to you a close reading of the New Testament. Paul did not involve himself in governmental things. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't. It's not to say you shouldn't vote. Of course you should. You're an American citizen. But remember the flow. You are a Christian first and an American second. You are a Christian first. Your citizenship is in heaven. You are simply a sojourner on this place and in this country. And you're, you are a Christian first, and that trumps everything. No pun intended, all right? That trumps everything, Christian, all right? You need to know that. You need to live that. And as a Christian, you should be pushing forward primarily, I'm going to say it again, can you be involved in government? Of course. Can you vote? Can you uh, bring the, the scriptures to bear on what government does? Absolutely. But you should be pushing forward the gospel. I want to ask you that question today. Are you, as a part of the right-hand kingdom of God, are you pushing forth the gospel? It, is that the single most important thing to you? Is that what you're writing your posts on Facebook and Twitter about? Is that what you're having discussions about? Is that what you're concerned about? That should be your primary concern. And secondarily, being involved in the things of the United States. I hope that speaks to you, Christian. I know it does to me. I know that it's, what I'm saying is hard because you want to be involved in all that stuff too. But God is calling you. God is calling you, in fact, to primarily be concerned about the kingdom of the right hand and bringing people to faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, Christian, I'm going to end it here. And just so you know, we're going to go a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but not much longer, maybe 10 to 15 tops in each one of these. But I hope that it's a blessing to you. And I hope that you are enabled to live for Jesus Christ every day until that day that you see Jesus face to face. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen.